to the gear shed. Today we're having a look at uh, one of the stoves in my collection. This is a kind of a uh, vintage stove from the late, I think that about late 80s, early 90s this came out. Uh, this is a Camping Gas Rando 360. Uh, this is an interesting little stove. Um, it came out in the time when you could still buy the puncher canister stoves um, and the self setting canisters were sort of just, uh, they'd only been out for sort of like five or six years. Um, this is interesting in that it runs on these little canisters. Uh, now these are unique to the stove, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, they are the standard fitting that if you're aware of camping gas, camping gas comes with a, uh, it's like a bayonet fit. It's not screwed on, you can see that there. Um, which you can get their bigger canisters with this kind of fit on it. But what they've done, what they decided to do with the stove is make this unique. So this is just a little bit, different than the standard camping gas fitting so you cannot put anything but these canisters on the stove and that uh, means there's a little bit of problem with that and for two things one is these are like hen's teeth rocking horse shit they are so hard to find um, especially in the UK every now and again they come up I managed to sort of get uh, six of these canisters that somebody had it did cost me a pretty penny uh, I think it was like 20 quid or something crazy like that for some of these they've been sitting around for a while um, you can still get them they are still made um, they used in most of their available in France I've seen them advertised um, on eBay from France uh, but they used as um, for the bottom of uh, like fondue heaters and stuff like that and also for soldering irons so they are still made I have seen seen them as new and even then again they come up in the UK um, one of the camping stores over here has them, but they want nearly 40 quid for six of them. So it's not cost effective to run this as an everyday stove, but it's nice to keep it as a little bit of nostalgia. Now I used to have, what happened with this, I used to have one of these stoves back in, back into the nineties. My boss was working in an outdoor store and he actually just gave it to me because they couldn't sell it. Uh, and it gave me all the canisters at the time. Um, and I played around with it for a little bit. Um, and then I kind of just like lost track of it think it, after moving a few times it disappeared and I kind of lost lost all interest in, in, uh, in it and then I saw one of these at, at uh, car boot for a pound so I had to buy it and it didn't have any canisters at this time but I thought well at least I've got it um, got some canisters for it so we can actually turn it on and show you it now one of the one of the other downsides this was this was a market as like an alpine stove mainly because it has this little windshield this all comes off so it's almost like a first generation uh, jet boil ish um, as being integrated so your pot sits on top so that's all locked on there you've got your lid here also comes with a uh, pot holder which I've using for something else um, so it was all quite integrated it's quite solid because it's like quite low to the ground and the canister on the side acts like sort of another leg it's pretty solid, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, but the glaring problem with this, great design, but these canisters are only butane, uh, which is crap in the cold. So as an Alpine stove, this is pretty shit. Um, it's more, you know, more better suited to summertime, warmer temperatures where it's not going to get cold. Uh, even three seven season use, you know, if it's going to get around zero degrees, you're going to start struggling with just the plain butane. Um, and obviously these are also small canisters, these are 52 grams. So, um, you're gonna rock through one of these fairly quick um, so yeah not a long you know a long expedition type of system I mean they might work better um, if you put these in your sling bag or whatever to keep warm but you know you, you're gonna lose a lot of powers and with the straight butane you're not getting a hot um, a hot burn either now wh what's kind of cool with this is that this comes off obviously your pot comes off this goes into here goes into the bottom like that um, you undo your little bayonet fit, so this is like a twist, you twist it a little bit, cool, and then that pops off, you fold your, fold your little leggies up here, so you've got four legs, they're all spring, like that, that goes into there, and then you can also put a couple of these in here, like that, and then you can put your lid on top as well. Voila, and you have sort of an integrated pot cook system. Now they used to also come with a blue rubber band, which this one, yeah, lost years ago to hold it all together. So that was your whole pot system. Now if you look at it, if you actually whack this on the scales, for my scales to wake up, it's not the lightest thing in the world. With two, bearing in mind, 
uh, with two gas canisters on it. Waiting for my scales to zero. Come on, you guys. Uh, you're looking with that, you probably can't see it on the uh, picture, you're looking at 628 grams, which is quite a bit. Okay, so that's even with the, but so obviously bear in mind that it's even with uh, two canisters in there, so that's like 100 grams of gas. So um, so that's quite a cool little system. You can see why you get excited about that in, in, uh, in sort of the age of big heavy cookers with um, PS canisters. But let's have a look at this. We'll turn it on and show you how much you're not getting for your money <laughs> so to speak so these just sort of they clip push in and then you screw and then the little valve obviously screws that pushes the piston in um, what's kind of clever with this as well it's you screw it all the way out to turn it off so it's sort of like loose when it's off which is kind of a bit weird uh, that goes on top here and sits in little notches okay didn't have piezo so you got to keep have your own uh, source so what you need to do is you need to screw this in right and that's flat out <laughs> very very minuscule flame it's not roaring that's all there is so you're gonna be waiting a while and that's a full canister as well so um, yeah it's not it's not a super a beast put it that way uh, it's not going to cook your tea any anytime soon in uh, negative temperatures. But as you can see, the whole concept of having like an integrated pot and all that sort of thing—it's not—it's not new. It's definitely been around. There was other uh, attempts at the time. There's also the, I think, the Tourist, which was used the Severe 123 body without the sort of the pot stand and had an integrated windshield and all sorts of stuff in it. So um, it's certainly something that's not new with these jet boils. But the efficiency, the efficiency is. Uh, a lot more plus obviously the fuel these things um yeah great for size and stuff if you're doing like you know you take a couple of those through an overnight alpine or something like that but with butane if it was butane protein propane mix um it would be pretty cool but um sadly no um so this is kind of like a it's a great little collector's piece um it's cool i like these little cookers the um yeah, it's just that it would be nice if you could get canisters and use them all the time, but th this is very cost ineffective. <laughs> uh, not only that, that you know the, the actual consumption of the gas on these things is, is quite severe, but having canisters that are 52 grams each, you're going to need a few for even a weekend away um, because it does chew, chew through the gas, this thing. And also it, the amount of cooking, actual power you get with it is pretty, pretty low. All right. So yeah, it's just something, something of interest. That's the uh, Chemigas Rando 360. Um, as always, thank you for tuning in. I uh, hope this has been an uh, interesting thing for you. Uh, comments in the comments box if you've had one of these before or you've had any experience with them. Um, yeah, just whack a comment in and, and tell me what you think. Uh, and then until next time, guys, thanks very much.